How are we doing everybody? I have decided to grow a cutie beard. I would love to see snapshots of your beards, boys and girls, so give me a DM on Instagram. <laughs> Send me a DM of your beard and I'll repost it. I think it'd be fun. On my Instagram and YouTube comments as well, I've been getting questions from you guys about what camera should I choose or when should I level up to this kind of a camera? And as you saw from the title of today's video, we're talking about when do you actually need a cinema camera. And I was inspired by YC Imaging's video that he dropped the other day, talking about his journey through all of his different cameras. So I kind of want to do something somewhat similar, but kind of reframe it and talk about when do you actually need to make that jump to a cinema camera, or do you need to? And there's not a strict path that every person has to follow. It's going to be different for you, going to be different for me. And even the definition of cinema camera is changing as technology advances. Cameras are getting smaller, but really capable, more affordable. So I wanna, my cats are playing with my, kitty, come here. It's a really nice day and I have my window sill open. So my cats are just like staring out the window. This is Tommy. Say hi, go say hi. Say hi to the boom mic. Oh, he's grabbing it. Good boy. Go play. So this was actually my very first camera ever, technically. It's a compact VHS. Video Movie GR-AX25. And I love this camera. It's so lightweight. It feels like it could just fall apart. It's just plastic. But this is what I started on. It was my parents' camera. Last year, I actually converted all of the tapes from this camera and my next camera, the Sony Handycam, into digital. So it's cool. I can show you guys B-roll from the freaking 90s, dude. And really, these two cameras is how I fell in love with making videos. I lived in a small town in Nebraska and there wasn't much going on. So me and my sister and a couple of our friends would just make videos all the time. I just, I remember growing up and having a camera in my hand, seriously, like every day. And back then I wasn't ever thinking that I would make a job out of it or anything making videos, but that really is where my love for filmmaking and making videos started. I remember specifically with this camera, the Sony Handycam, which freaking has a vlog screen, bro. I never had a computer when I shot footage with this camera, so I would have to switch it to playback mode, pause it where I wanted the cut to be, and then start filming to get the next scene to start. Get record. Go. <laughs> I didn't have the ability to actually physically edit. Can you stop? Literally scraping my walls right now. I love you, but you're a nuisance fatherhood. But this is the camera where I really learned how to run and gun and be creative on the spot and just come up with stories and funny situations. And I will always hold those memories so dear to me. And that's where this whole thing began for me. I did some stuff in high school for a digital media class, like this music video that I wrote and recorded and made the video for. How do we learn from the legend if we're just little boys? Big world. Very cringe, very, very cringe, but I had to give you a snip. In college, I kind of decided to get back into this whole video thing. I had a friend who I went to college with who filmed everything and made these jackass style videos of me and my friend group. I was really inspired by my friend and he was about to graduate and I kind of took it upon myself to, to take the mantle of making these dumb jackass videos. I asked my parents to invest in me and give me my first DSLR. Told them that I would work my butt off and try to get some freelance gigs and just refine this as a skill and maybe potentially try to do something with it as a job someday. They bought me my first DSLR, which was the Canon T5i. I documented my crazy friends on the college floor, made a ton of videos just for fun. But on the side, I was actually starting to get really passionate about learning filmmaking techniques and I was just absorbing as much YouTube content as possible while skipping class a lot too. So I started to take this knowledge and in the evenings after classes and stuff, I would go to shows and film and photograph metal bands. I did this like crazy. I would just photograph bands or film them, make little videos. And basically doing that, I ended up landing my very first gig with the T5i doing a promotional photo shoot for a metal band. College was an awesome way to connect with people, obviously, and there were young couples getting engaged. So when I had a couple friends get engaged, I asked them if I could shoot their wedding film. I'm pretty sure I got like a hundred bucks or something, but that's where I started. That's where I started getting paid was using the Canon T5i. And after the T5i was the Canon 70D. The 70D was 
absolutely worth the upgrade to me. That camera was special. It's still a great camera today. Oh wait, I'm currently selling it on eBay because I'm just doing retro reviews and then using that money to buy other cameras because this channel comes right out of my pocket. Also during this time with the 70D was when I got Film Convert, which is still the program I use today to color grade. During my time with the 70D, I started to hear about this camera called the 5D Mark III. I just remember feeling like I had to have that camera to make good videos. And I remember discovering one YouTuber by the name of Andy Axe. He's still making videos today. He made a video comparing the 5D Mark III to the Panasonic. GH4. This was the first time I ever even heard that Panasonic made cameras. And I saw that it had a flip screen, shot in 4K, had flat color profiles. And after that moment, I became a, a Panny Fanny boy for quite a while, dude. <laughs> so I got rid of my 70D, moved on to the GH4, and that's when I started to learn about 4K, about color grading, flat profiles. I learned that my computer sucked butts. I was not great at color grading the Cine D profile and I never used a V-Log on the GH4, but that's when I had to like go through that transitional phase of like learning how to get decent color, learning how to expose properly. It took me quite a while, but I remember making some stuff with the GH4 that I was definitely proud of. It was just like that next step up. And then the announcement of just the legendary Panasonic GH5. That was the camera where I feel like my work transitioned from like, hey, this guy does videos to like, oh, that's a professional cinematographer, videographer, whatever the heckins you wanna call it. Two things with the GH5. I shot a ton of client work. I was always trying to stay busy. I was also undercharging, so I ended up getting a lot of work and swamping myself. It was a really stressful time actually, but on top of that, I was doing YouTube. I started my YouTube channel, started to try to get kind of serious about it. So I was just refining my skills like crazy. And I think that's also important. It's not just like getting a nice camera is gonna make you good. That's not even close. You have to shoot, edit, color, plan. You gotta learn this crap. And I just did that over and over and over, just repetitiously, obsessively. I made stuff. I did one music video where I freelanced the whole thing or all the band performance stuff. I remember that looked really cool and different. I shot a, a crap ton of weddings, so many YouTube videos. I need to go ahead and count every project I did at the GH5 because it's a ridiculous number. Now we're almost caught up. Recently, I started working with two other guys in Atlanta. I'm in Nashville and we started this little film collective called Hometown Crew. Working with these dudes is the thing that also took me to this like step that I'm at now where I'm doing more professional stuff, but it's like, we're still scrappy filmmakers. We're not like professional industry guys. We don't know all that kind of lingo. We do some work in that world once in a while, but it's very like fast paced and just like kind of gritty and it's super fun. And it just kind of reminds me of the times where I was making videos on these kinds of cameras. Just like, you're just doing everything you can with what you have to make the coolest looking stuff. And so doing stuff with Hometown Crew, I've had more of a need to produce the most professional quality possible. One of the guys I work with owns a Red Dragon 6K and I had the GH5. We actually did some stuff where we used the GH5 and the Ninja as a B cam to the Red and it totally can pass for sure but we just needed a solid cinema B cam. And that's why I got the old Ursa. I just did a review on this bad boy. It's an amazing camera. Unfortunately, I'm selling it and I'm gonna do a separate video about that. Jumping from the GH5's image quality to the Ursa G2 was pretty significant. I don't know how to explain it. It's definitely better image quality, absolutely, than the GH5. For me, I'm just letting my career just naturally progress. I'm not trying to force myself into the next step. I'm absolutely not gonna take out a loan and get an Ari Alexa and hope that people rent it or hope people hire me as an owner operator. This is a hard topic because what is a cinema camera, you know? <music> Obviously, if you're a full-time DP or a camera owner operator and you're consistently being hired for that, yeah, it makes sense to have a really nice cinema camera, like a RED or an Airy. It's so easy to get caught up in like marketing hype or what other people have, or to see that little bit of extra resolution in this new camera. I think you should just look at your, your finances, obviously, your career, like how often you're getting hired, what kind of work you're doing, 
and make the decision based on those kinds of things. And yes, you can absolutely outgrow a camera. I really felt like I outgrew the GH4 and needed to move to the GH5 to start doing the things that I wanted to do. And don't let people tell you that your rig isn't good enough. I don't know if anybody would tell you that anyway, but if somebody like looks down on you for having a GH4 or GH5 and a Ninja, don't worry about that stuff. So what is the answer to this question? When do you need a cinema camera? There is no real answer because it's different for all of us. I just hope this video encourages you to look within yourself and make your decision based on what you need and what you're doing and put yourself in a good situation. Don't put yourself in a bad financial situation. I would encourage you to go back and look at some of your old footage because it's fun and it's awesome to see how you've grown, relive some memories. That's why we do this anyway. We capture these memories so that we can enjoy them. Um, and I gotta get better at that for sure. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you so much. Here's my patrons. OMG, thank you so much for watching my video. Uh, shout out to all of my patrons on the screen and specifically two of my beautiful $9 or more patrons. We got Brandon Steger and Josh Huey. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. Um, I need as many patrons as possible, so thank you. And remember to DM me your beard pics, okay? I want to see some beard action for Q-Teen, all right? Love you, bye. We make a lot of movies, and we love you. Well, we'll hope this one gets to theaters. Hey, Starfire. Well, see you later, folks. Where's the button? <laughs> Where's the button?